So I'm delighted now to hand over to uh, Dr. Martina Quadraccio, who's lecturer in ecology, and Dr. Claire Wilson, senior lecturer in biological and environmental sciences from the University of Stirling. And really importantly, uh, Marius Dunai and Adenima Ochi, who are students from uh, the University of Stirling. So Martina, delighted to have you and your colleagues with us. Um, over to you, please. So thank you very much for inviting us today. We are thrilled that we are going to give you an overview of our ongoing uh, project and possibly give you an example of a co-design field course. And, um, and this co-design field course possibly can be used as a, an example, a study case of a pedagogical practice that includes EDI. So we have been uh, awarded a NERC grant. Our project has been awarded a, a NERC grant. And, uh, and um, this call was called uh, um, uh, Making uh, Environmental Science Equitable, Diverse and Inclusive. And our project uh, focuses on EDI in the context of the fieldwork for undergraduate students. And our main objective, as the title says, is amplifying our students' voice. And how do we do that? Well, by involving students at every step of the project while we focus on their uh, lived experience. Uh, as uh, Lisa said, I'm not the only presenter today. Uh, I'm here with um, my co-PI, Dr. Joe Clark, and two of our students, Marius Dunai and Adima Onorcie. Okay, thank you for having us. As we already heard during the presentation before, field skills in environmental science degrees are very important. And therefore, we need to make sure that field courses are accessible and inclusive. Uh, re reminding also uh, what uh, um, the previous speaker said for a diverse student community, because our student community is becoming more and more diverse year after year. So our project tried to answer these following questions. The first one is, what are the barriers to EDI encountered by our students in field courses? Second is, can we find solutions to address these challenges? And then what approach should we use to succeed in these? And we're going to focus this presentation especially on the approach. So we have four aims in our project and they uh, each feed onto each other. So every aim is, is like a step that forwards the completion of the project and they feed into each other. So the first uh, aim is uh, trying to identify EDI barriers and solution to fieldwork. And to do so, we distributed questionnaires and organized workshops with the students and staff. Second aim is to co-produce a field course with students to improve EDI. And we co-design a residential field course with the students. And then we test and verify it and further refine what we produce always together, taking the feedback from the students. And uh, we do this uh, um, uh, using ad hoc questionnaires that we distributed to the students to evaluate the field course. The fourth aim is to disseminate the, the case study and good practice for improving EDI in field work. And this is why we're here today, exactly. So, Today's presentation will focus on the co-design of the residential field course and its evaluation. Just to give you an overview of how we organize this co-design field course to include the EDI in its approach, we organize um, a three days residential field course. We were at the biological field station of Loch Lomond and we in be invited we invited the 12 students and you can see a wonderful picture here at the end of the course. And because we had the three days, we organized uh, our field course in three different phases. The first phase was exploration and envisionment, where we discussed initially with the students uh, the principle of EDI, trying to understand if we were at the same, at the same uh, phase. 
Then uh, we had a workshop where we discussed in general the solution to uh, EDI challenges encountering residential field course. So I'm talking about EDI challenges related, for example, to uh, transport or to accommodation or to communication pre-field work. And then uh, instead we focus our co-design on uh, two different field activities. Uh, that we tested on the next day during the phase of uh, operationalization. On the third day, we had uh, a lot of uh, work on uh, reflection. So first of all, we assessed the uh, co-design field activities. That means that the students uh, help us in identify the possible barriers during these activities. We assess them and, get, and obtain feedback from the students to refine them. And then uh, we let the students reflect on the co-design process. When we come home, uh, one week after, or a few days after, uh, we uh, provide, we send the uh, evaluation form uh, to the students uh, to assess uh, both the field course uh, and the co-design uh, process. So uh, I, we are in the next, uh, the students, uh, Marius and Alima, they will uh, especially talk uh, about the reflection and the evaluation. So I give uh, the word to, Marius. Hello everyone, I'm Marius. I'm a student uh, at the University of Stirling studying environmental geography and I attended the workshops and the field course at March. At the end of the work uh, at the field work, uh, we created a booklet as part of the reflection phase and uh, where we could add our um, thoughts and re reflective inputs in a creative way. This was a previous stage of the final workshop at the field course. In the picture, you can see one of the booklets what we created during this workshop. Um, we uh, sorted ourselves into a group of three and then each group created one booklet. My team members, Anna, Murray and myself, um, had our thoughts on our experience of code design and I thought I'm going to share these with you today. One of us wrote, it was really nice to be included in the whole process, including planning and being asked for feedback and constructive feedback. And this potentially because the communication at eye level worked really well and um, our ideas were um, really uh, taken into consideration. Finally, one of us wrote, it felt really good that the lecturers were interested in our opinions. Personally, I learned several new skills and experienced a new way of field working. Our final idea was to create a tree of EDI to represent the field course, what we attended, and its roots, uh, we thought its roots are the principles of equality, um, diversity, and inclusion. And we thought the fruits of the tree are learning outside the classroom and learning new field skills but also empathy. And we understood and accepted each other needs. And um, finally, at the end, uh, in a, such an inclusive environment, we managed to have some relaxation as well. So now I'm going to give it to my student. Adiman, now you can unmute yourself. And I will change the slides for, for you. My name is Adima. I was part of the 12 participants um, that attended the EDI a um, couple of weeks ago. Um, in this section, I will present some of the results from the final evaluation that we completed after the field course. This was a chance for us to reflect on how everything went. 10 out of the 12 participants completed the evaluation form. Next slide, please. The graph on the left displays the results from the statement that all students involved were able to have an equal say. On the x-axis, we have the level of agreement from strongly disagree, disagree, and slightly disagree. Neither agree nor disagree, true to slightly agree, agree and strongly agree. On the y-axis, we have the percentage of respondents all respondents were in agreement with the majority, strongly agreeing with the statement. The other graph on the right displays the results from the statement that 
that staff and students involved in the development of field activities had a poor input. The majority of the students were in agreement with one student disagreeing. We were not sure why the student disagreed. It could possibly be because of the staff we are overall responsible for leading the field course. A student said, everyone was welcome to add anything. The next. On this other graph, we have same axis of, of this graph with the level of agreement on the bottom and the percentage of respondents on the Y axis. In the response to both these statements, the respondents felt that their contributions to the code design process was valued and appreciated. And the respondents felt included and involved in the code design workshop. All students were in agreement. Here is a quote taken from this response. I think it's incredibly valuable being able to have input to field courses and part of, as part of the curriculum. It will boost enjoyment as well as student satisfaction. The figure on the other graph shows the respondents' agreements to whether they feel they were more likely to participate in similar opportunities as a result of participating in the code design process. All students are in agreement. There was a quote taken from an anonymous student. I think this is a valuable and enjoy enjoyable experience for anyone and would strongly encourage anyone considering going on a course like this to do so. The final graph, the final, the final graph presents the overall quality of the respondents' experience on the field course. On the y-axis is the percentage of respondents. On the x-axis is the experience quality rating from one, which is low to five, which is high. 90% of the students gave the overall quality of experience the highest possible rating of five. And one student rated it second to the highest, scoring a four. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Adama. So in this slide, I'm going to um, present our final reflections. And so the experience of co-production um, has got multiple benefits for students and, and also for staff. And this includes for students a range of uh, skill development. So this includes communication, negotiation skills. So during the workshop, students communicated um, together and had to sort of negotiate an um, outcome for for some of our field activities. They also developed uh, intellectual skills. They learned um, new knowledge about uh, uh, EDI and how to apply, apply it in, in, in different situations, um, remove barriers in different situations. They also developed um, appraisal and critic, critical skills where they had to critique our sort of um, methods for the field work and suggest new uh, processes for, for how we would run our practicals. Um, they also develop practical skills because we were out in the field uh, running these field courses, so they learned how to um, collect and identify invertebrates um, in the fresh water. They also developed professional skills, um, so, um, such as developing behaviours and how to support EDI, which will be important for their future careers. Other benefits that have also been mentioned is that uh, students stated that their they well-being improved. They had the opportunity to enjoy the surrounding environment, um, feeling comfortable with each other, uh, improved relaxation. They also developed a sense of community, uh, shared empathy, um, and an overall sense of, of satisfaction from the work that they did. A, a challenge that came up um, was identifying boundaries. Um, so establishing clear boundaries at the start uh, would be um, important if we were to, to run this again. Uh, so as soon said, they think that um, it's good to have someone in a position to make things clear and specify the rules or the do's and the don'ts. Uh, I think because students were uh, having an input into the running of the field course, they weren't quite sure where that, that boundary um, lay, where they could input and where they couldn't. Just um, a minute or so left. Um, sorry, thank you. Awesome. And um, the final is, is timing and flexibility. So this can be quite um, a challenge for a field course where often we are trying to include as many activities as we as we possibly can within um, a, a short time frame. But to embed co-production into field courses, we do have to be flexible and account for that 
uh, potential additional time in. And so I'll leave you with this uh, final question and thought. Could co-production be a win-win solution for staff and students? Um, thank you for your attention and any questions. Many thanks for that really inspirational example. So we have uh, one question. Uh, these are such valuable skills generated for students um, and empathy towards ED&I issues. Would this be replicated across all field trips or might you do it as a scaled down version across your university? Have you thought how you might um, amplify the sort of significance of your work across your institution? Yeah, so I think so. this is part of a project, so it was a, a one off and uh, was a, a three days work with the students. So I don't think that the curriculum and timing in the curriculum could permit that. But uh, our findings uh, will be definitely shared uh, within our institution and possibly also um, also wider. And uh, uh, the idea is uh, to share uh, a sort of toolkit uh, of uh, what to do to make uh, a field course, uh, a residential field course, uh, more inclusive uh, that uh, um, can uh, take into consideration uh, all uh, the students' requirements and needs. That uh, can uh, start, uh, for example, with uh, uh, a questionnaire in a being customized to, to the students' needs. And, I hope that I answered the question. Thank you. Would you mind well, just sharing your um, co-production? Thank you. So yeah, thank you. That was fantastic. We've got a couple more questions. Uh, one was, uh, can I ask about assessment, please? Did this team consider modes of assessment and their relative inclusivity? And that's from Georgie. Um, yeah, that's a that's a good question. So this, as we said, was a separate project. Um, and so there was no uh, specific IL, ILOs, and um, so no aligned assessments for, for this project because it was trying to co-produce a field course that we could um, replicate at a later at a later date. And so in in our in our in our jobs, we do consider um, you know assessment and making assessments inclusive, but it wasn't specifically part of, of this project. That's fantastic. Thank you. And then we have another question. Uh, can you um, share what EDO and I challenges you faced and how these were overcome? And so perhaps some examples about practical suggestions that the students made for how, how the, the course could be run. That would be really helpful. Hmm. So one um, that came up that was quite hard to find um, a balance for was the timing and um, and enough breaks. So there were students uh, um, who sort of had um, um, challenges with, with, with learning and, and, and concentration, and so were quite preferred to have a greater number of breaks. Um, whilst sometimes it, uh, other students felt that it interrupted the pace of the field course. So trying to strike a balance there was, um, uh, was a little bit of a challenge. Mm -hmm. um, uh, also, the, um, we, we mentioned also in our presentation before about uh, the importance of the site that sometimes we decide for a field course, but uh, there were, when we were under the workshop, uh, one of the uh, things that come up is like, uh, why don't we do it? Uh, on campus uh, or in Scotland. Uh, so, and maybe not seven days on a row, but uh, in a short, uh, like one, two days. So students uh, can um, ask them uh, more easily, is uh, less, uh, there are less financial constraints. Uh, and uh, also, for example, a lot of students, uh, they work and it's difficult to find, um, you know, to ask uh, for time off. So if he's uh, in the country, with a shorter time, definitely they can have, uh, you know, we make uh, field skills and field activities more inclusive in that sense as well. That's fantastic. Thank you. I think we've got time for one very quick one um, is um, that somebody said, it's Alison, I think, I love the idea of co producing field work with students. If this were to be scaled up, because I know this is a project, but if this were to be scaled up, do you envisage that all students in the cohort would be involved or 
If not, how would you go about identifying which students to participate in the co-production? Um, that, yeah, that's, a, that's another good question. Um, I think because we have such a range of, of students and I, I wouldn't want to, to sort of narrow the input, uh, it would be great to, to open it to, to everyone. So we can understand that um, different students have different um, time commitments. Uh, and so maybe the opportunity for everyone to, to input, but maybe if we were running workshops and everyone couldn't attend, uh, they could feed in some other some other way, like maybe run them online um, instead. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah, I think I think that maybe also uh, if you make the uh, attendance of a, a co-production uh, session to all the students uh, through across years, uh, at least once across year would be, you know, would be great. So they can learn all these skills that uh, Joe was talking about in the in the last slide. We we didn't realize how how useful it could be to students uh, working together with us uh, to gain uh, a range of skills that actually are very good for employability and, and other reasons. Fantastic. Well, thank you again so much for your presentation and to all of the team and uh, for answering the questions uh, so fully.